In the final chapter of their book, the authors of How Learning Works address how students can become self-directed learners. As the principle of the chapter outlines, to become self-directed learners, students must learn to assess the demands of a task, evaluate their knowledge and skills, plan their approach, monitor their progress, and adjust their strategies as needed. While there are a number of research models that outline how students might become self-directed learners, many models agree that students must engage in a number of processes that both monitor and control their learning. The cycle of self-directed learning is conceptualized in Figure 7.1 in How Learning Works, with students' beliefs on intelligence and learning being a central component of the model. Much of their chapter focuses on research findings relative to each process in the cycle, as well as how students' beliefs about intelligence and learning impact self-directed learning. Before students can become self-directed learners, they must learn how to assess tasks at hand. Research suggests that this is not always natural or easy for students, especially novice learners. If you find students are struggling with self-direction, it is possible that students may need to learn how to assess tasks given to them. Finding opportunities for students to practice assessing problems can be helpful, as well as providing feedback on the accuracy of their task assessment before they begin work on a task. Even if students can accurately assess what an assignment requires, students must be able to accurately evaluate their own strengths and weaknesses relative to a particular problem. Evidence shows that, in general, people have difficulty recognizing their own strengths and weaknesses, especially still emerging learners. The importance of evaluating strengths and weaknesses boils down to identifying how well prepared students are to tackle a particular problem. If students overestimate their knowledge or capabilities, they may take on problems they are not prepared to successfully fulfill, at least without guidance or support. When compared to experts, emerging learners spend very little time planning how to accomplish various tasks. Due to this lack of planning, emerging learners often waste a great deal of time pursuing errant solutions. Research shows that planning is an effective method for choosing a viable solution to a problem but students often fail to recognize that connection. Even when students do engage in planning, they frequently make plans that are incongruent for the task at hand. For this reason, it can be helpful for instructors to model appropriate and effective planning strategies for their students. Students who naturally monitor their progress and try to explain their learning as they go typically show greater learning gains than their peers who do not self-assess progress and understanding. Similarly, students who are prompted to monitor their understanding or to explain what they are learning have greater learning gains versus students who are not prompted to monitor understanding during the learning process. For this reason, it can be valuable for educators to encourage and model strategies for monitoring performance during learning. The last process self-directed learners will apply is to reflect upon and adjust one's approach to learning. It can be difficult for learners to begin doing this, as we often fall back on tried and true strategies, even when they may be inefficient for certain tasks. Research shows that good problem solvers will consider and try different approaches to address unique problems, whereas poor problem solvers usually stick with approaches they know well. Explicitly showing how one strategy versus another can impact problem solving can be a good method for getting students to reflect upon the potential value of adjusting one's approach to solving problems. As we saw earlier in Figure 7.1, students' beliefs about intelligence and learning also impact how likely they are to become self-directed learners. In particular, whether or not students believe learning is fixed or malleable is particularly important as learners who feel they cannot learn something are less likely to engage in the processes we've just outlined. The authors of How Learning Works provide a variety of strategies for the processes associated with self-directed learning. If you are able to determine which process your learners are having difficulty with, you can choose a strategy related to that process to implement in your course. In addition to those process-specific strategies, the authors also outline two broader strategies that can be helpful across each process. 
The first strategy is to model your own metacognitive strategies for students. By doing so, students can glean insights from an expert in the field about how to tackle various problems. By being explicit about what you are doing and why you are doing it, students will have a better sense of how experts approach problem solving. Alternatively, you can choose to scaffold metacognitive processes in a manner where students can practice each process in isolation and, over time, begin synthesizing the processes together in smaller subsets. For example, assessing and evaluating a problem. Eventually, students will be able to complete the cycle of self-directed learning in full. This concludes our video series reflecting upon the text, How Learning Works. I hope you have found these videos to be both helpful and informative. For more information, be sure to check out the links in the description below.